I'm Jackie Doucette, and I'm on a mission to discover exactly what life is like beyond retirement. Join me while I chat with people who've already done it, who've retired to something rather than from something. Let's find out together exactly what's waiting for us when we say goodbye to that nine to five. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Retirement. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by Raiden Stansel. He's a certified financial planner. He's also a best-selling author, and he's the founder of Peace of Mind Wealth Management, which is a firm committed to helping individuals retire with excellence. He's also the co-host of the Secure Your Retirement podcast, and that's uh, something that we'll probably end up talking a little bit about today, but uh, Raiden, thanks very much for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show, Jackie. I appreciate it. And I think... We'll probably start off with a, a little bit about how uh, how you started what you're doing. Not not necessarily just because you're a you're a financial planner, but how you got into working with people going into retirement, and you know what's your what's your focal point. Well, I have a little bit of a different kind of background. My dad, um, he uh, was married very young and had a child, and then and then life kind of took him through a different course, and he became single again, and and then. Uh, a little bit later, when he was 50 years old, he married my mom. My mom was 19 years younger than him. Um, and so she said, I would like to have children. And he said, okay. And they agreed on that. And so he had me when he was 52. Uh, I have a brother he had when he was uh, 54 and a sister at 57. So my dad had us a little bit later in life. Interestingly, on that little side point, uh, I have a brother who is uh um, about uh, 30 years older than I am. And so him and I talk about the fact that we have two different dads, even though it's the same guy. He had the young dad. I had the older dad. But my dad was born in 1919. So he lived through the Great Depression um, and he dealt with those issues. And so the way he raised us was quite different uh, from people that were my age. I'm 48 now. My dad passed away about five years ago at the age of 95. But a lot of the clients I have, our parents are the same age. Um, uh, and so we kind of have lived through a lot of the things that um, are very similarly. Well, anyway, I was raised in a heating and air conditioning business, installation of, and homes of heating and air conditioning. And I decided I wanted to try something different. And so for about uh, 20 years now, I decided I wanted to go into financial services and I did that. And my focus always was around retirement planning because from my memory, my dad was always uh, in that category. I mean, you know, he was, it was, so from what I can remember, my dad was older. And a lot of times we were dealing with all those issues. So I remember when my dad went on social security, I was young. And, and, and so all of those elements of what to have to do in those in environment, that was just attractive to me because I had to I lived through that. So I kind of was focused on retirement planning. So when I went into financial services, the entire time I focused on folks that are close to, and I define close to within about 10 years of retirement or already in retirement. So that's how I got to where I'm at right now, or at least what my focus has been. Okay. And that, I mean, that that's probably the goal in financial planning anyway, is to prepare yourself for the future. And the future is going to be retirement at some point. Absolutely. Well, it's at least what the goal should be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you hope so. I mean, the, yeah. the alternatives aren't really great. <laughs> right. Exactly. So one of the things that um, I try to get along or try to talk to um, people about and gather up information for the listeners is the idea of moving from um, a nine to five job into retirement. And, you know, there's a, there's a big transition there usually, and people don't really know what they're going to do or if they're going to do something. They, they always spend their, their working life thinking, oh, if I could just retire, everything would be good, you know, when I retire. Without really thinking that, you know, after they retire, they've still got 20 more years of things to do. Um, how do you how do you position yourself to help people make that transition when when they're thinking retirement's the end and and you're trying to tell them you know you've still got 20 years you better plan for that too well you know i you know from my perspective of who we work with 
I would say that the majority of our clients don't view it as the end, but they, they view it uh, as an unknown. Um, okay. And so, so the idea is, and I see this all the time and I, and I prepare people, uh, what we've experienced is that there is a huge emotional um, transition from work to, of, of having to go to work to not having to go to work. Um, and so while people have done very good and they've saved good and they've done everything they're supposed to do, the emotional transition from work to non-work a lot of times can bring on depression. It can bring on um, this idea of, of I'm not, I don't have a purpose anymore. A lot of our clients were clients that have been managers, presidents, executives, whatever you might have had. They were good savers. And now all of a sudden, they either put in their notice or they got an early package and they decided to go ahead and take that package and to say, I'm going to retire. And now that they've all of that's gone and they go, what am I going to do? Now, I will tell you, uh, in our experience, the first year of retirement, is extremely busy. So the first year of retirement, everybody's just trying to figure it out. There's no problems. And everybody's just so busy. We, we meet with them throughout that process and they go, I'm so busy. I have got, I can't believe I ever was able to work. <laughs> and then by the time you get into year two, three, four of retirement, it starts to slow down and it's kind of like, what am I going to do? And at that point is where we have a lot of our clients that either decide, that they want to be a part of a charity or they want to uh, work part-time doing something. Um, and sometimes we have folks that have it in their head what they want to do. They, they know that they want to go into this thing that they always thought would be cool to do, but they never could do it because it wasn't financially sound. I'll give you a quick example. We've got a client of ours who he loves to scuba dive. That's his whole thing. He loves it. He just, but to be able to do that and make a full on living is not something that he could do. But when he retired, he knew the whole time I'm going to go work for a scuba diver, uh, scuba diving organization, and I'm going to help people, uh, you know, it, throughout that whole process. Cause I love it so much. And that's what he's been doing. He loves it. And he doesn't make hardly any money, but he doesn't care about the money. It's what his passion is. It's what he wanted to do. And so we see that a lot where people kind of go into something that they always wanted to do. We've got scenarios where um, I have a client right now who she uh, wanted to help her son who has started a bakery. And so she goes in, she works with her son on the bakery part-time but she is not making any money. But again, it's not about the money. It's about her being able to say, I want to go help my son do this project that he wanted to do. So we have all kinds of stories around that. And I think the biggest thing that we do is helping people basically put those goals down in writing, help them, help them to think through what are you going to do and what is going to be your lifestyle after retirement. And I do agree with you. I do not think a lot of people think about it. I think that they kind of go into this mindset of, oh, I'm going to retire and I'm just going to travel and I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And you do that. I mean, we see that all the time. People travel pretty heavy for the first three to five years, but even heavy is not that long much. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, it's a few weeks, a few months or whatever it might be, but it's just not going to, eat up your time the way you think it would. And that's a big thing. I'm when, when they suddenly realize they've got all this time left and then they don't have an identity to go with it. I guess that's, that's where the problem comes in. You, know, you, you can only say to somebody so many times I'm retired Yep. as opposed to I'm a banker or I'm a lawyer, right? It, it doesn't feel the same. And when you lose that identity, it's hard to hard to find it again. It's hard to find that purpose. So it's, it's Absolutely. good that some people uh, are able to pick up on a passion and that's, do you help them find, find that? Do you work on them with their, with retirement plans or with goals to tr try to figure out what they might be looking for? Um, not so much on about, we're not trying to help them figure it out. Other like, you know, like brainstorming necessarily. What we do though, is that we try to prepare our clients for the, the, the cycles that are going to go through. So 
a lot of times people get so stressed out about how much they're going to spend in retirement, for example, money wise, or is it going to all work? And, and we just let people know, or, or, or by the way, they'll say uh, their travel plans. And we just try to help people to appreciate that you need to kind of get yourself set up emotionally to realize that you're going to have a busy first year. You're then going to have two to three or four years of, you know, potentially having fun and just doing what you're going to, you know, do whatever that might be. And then a lot of times it's spend times with, with the family, the grandkids or whatever. And uh, where we live in North Carolina, a lot of our clients are, you know, their kids don't live here. They live other places. And so they're kind of busy traveling and all that kind of stuff. But then there's going to be this settle down phase. And so we start talking about what do you want to do in five years after retirement? And then that at least gets the conversation started for what they want to do and try to start, at least start thinking about those options. And it does. I mean, a lot of our clients end up being consultants. They end up being, uh, again, they go to charities. They end up becoming involved in the community, whatever it is. But they got to kind of go into it knowing that those are the steps that are going to happen. That not to go in it without thinking about that is probably a mistake. So one of the things that uh, that you talk about on your, um, on your website is the idea of having a, having a written plan for retirement. So that's, I mean, that's what you're just talking about, having an idea that there are going to be some things that happen through the, through the years as you go. Is it, do you think it's important to have that all written down or is it okay just to say, okay, you know, I'm going to do this for a couple of years and then I'm going to, you know, do something else. Do you think it's a concrete plan is important? I don't think a concrete plan, but I think having ideas that you actually write down um, are extremely important. And I think that if you thought to yourself that you, th if, like if a person just comes up with this idea, whatever it might be, I want to, uh, and, and I'll just make up some stuff. I want to, you know, I, my goal is to work with some charity. And I mean, we'll just go with that for that idea. I, you know, I want to work in a charity. I think writing that down, it just puts it into your brain in a different way to say now it's kind of out there and it's, it's what you want to do. I think having it in your brain and not writing it down is a mistake. I think you need to kind of think it through and write it down and, and that'll make it more concrete. Although you could write it down and never work with a charity, but I think the process of working it down, writing it down just makes it kind of in your brain a little bit more concrete. Uh, again, we're not trying to make, we don't try to like have a person figure it all out and say, hey, you need to have it all figured out because you're not going to have it figured out. You're just not. So don't go into, um, go back to what you just said. Uh, you know, a person's a, whatever they are, they're a lawyer, they're a doctor, they're an executive, they're a manager, whatever their life has been. A lot of that has been concrete goals that have been given to them. And I think if you go into retirement with this concrete idea of what you want, that's, that's a mistake because it's just not going to happen that way. But if you have ideas and you go, I got an idea of what I want to do, then that'll at least guide you in that direction. And I think you'll, you'll, most of our clients figure that out, but I think you, at least just writing down certain things uh, and doing that and then having little goals. I mean, treat it not like a business, but kind of like a reward, you know, Hey, I made it through this year and it, and, and everything went good. So we're going to celebrate, you know? Um, so the idea, so a lot of times people go, well, I don't know how much I'm going to spend. And they come up with a budget and you get to the end of the year. If you kind of hit that mark and everything was good, celebrate about it, have fun, just like you would at work, you know, have a celebration, go out to dinner, go do whatever you're going to do, but treat it a little bit more like a system versus this, I'm just going to go into it and with no plan. So you mentioned that, that having the budget and you know meeting the budget, whatever it might be. Do you think it, um, people are, are better off if they plan things out that way and, and have a budget? I mean, lots of people go into retirement worried about how much they're going to spend and, and whether there's going to be enough savings and you know what's going to happen if the money runs out. How do you, how do you help them, you know, quench those, those fears of the money running out? Well, what we personally do is we run a lot of what if statements for people. So a lot of what if uh, calculations. And I will say that 
for anybody most of the time worried about it, they've done a good job. It's the people who've not worried about it that probably haven't done a good job. So if I've got a person in front of me who's really worried about it, um, then most of those occasions, they've done a good enough job, they're going to be fine. They just need to see the numbers and need to see how it plays out. And so what we do is we run calculations and we'll say, okay, let's just play out your game of what if. What if you get sick? What if you do this? What if uh, this person, uh, you know, maybe if they're a couple, what if one of you passes away? And I mean, we don't try to be morbid, but we just try to play the what if game because the more what ifs we can put into the, to the scenario, people's confidence goes way, way, way up. And, and that's, that's really the key, I think, is playing your question yourself. Because sometimes you could be falling short. Um, we talk about all the time that it's not so much about how much you've saved. It's about how much you spend. So we've got clients with that have saved multiple millions of dollars, but they spend so rapidly that it's barely a good plan. And we've got clients with a few hundred thousand dollars who have a much better retirement plan because they spend much less. Now we're not in the budget business. So we never tell people, Hey, by the way, let's look at your budget and look how much you're spending. We tell people, tell us how much you're spending. Now, if we see it get out of whack and we see it going, we're going, where's it, where's the problem here and what's happening. And we try to help them to kind of like, think about what's going on. And you know, it could be a multiple of things. It could be some, a lot of times people are giving away or gifting too much money. That's really the issue. A lot of times, like they go, I really want to help the grandkids to this level. And we're going, yeah, you probably shouldn't be trying to help the grandkids that much because your, your financial plan doesn't work if you help them that much. And it's always nice to, uh, to give everybody gifts, but uh, right. you still got to have something to live on. Correct. And you can't just kind of say, okay, I'm only going to live to 72 so I can spend this money because what happens if you don't, what happens if you live to 90? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, a lot, and that's the other big thing that people want to know. They want to plan on based on when they think they're going to pass away. And I'm like, you know, that there's no way if we all had that crystal ball, then it would yeah make it super easy. But that's just not the way it works. <laughs> so you we mentioned I mentioned at the beginning, you've got a podcast. Um, do you ha you have a, a product, a course that you uh, that you offer to people as well, don't you? Yeah. So what we did was, is that, you know, we, we are, we understand that there's a lot of questions people have. There's, you know, questions of like, how much money do I need to have in order to uh, be able to retire? We know that there's questions like, you know, how do I deal with long-term care? When do I take social security here in the United States? Uh, or how do, when do I take a pension? Do I take a pension that, you know, that is based on my life or based on a couple's life. You know, there's all these different underlying questions and it's huge. Uh, people get overwhelmed. Um, how do I deal with healthcare? How do I deal with all these different topics? And so we did, we developed a little, what we call mini video course that we call four steps to secure your retirement. It's four videos. They're not very long. I don't know. I think probably 10, 15 minutes each video. They come over the course of four days it's free. We're not asking for any money. It is simply to say, how do I think through retirement? What should I think about? The person who is really wants to watch this is somebody who's going, I just don't know all the things I'm supposed to ask. That's by the way, the number one question we get asked by a person who's talking to us is they go, is there anything else I should be asking you that I'm not asking you? Because I don't know what I'm supposed to be asking. I, yeah. You only retire one time, you know? Hopefully. And so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you only retire one more time, one time. So this is almost like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be asking. I've never done this before. Yeah. And so that video course is really kind of built to do that. So you, you go to our website, which is pomwealth.net forward slash blog. That's the best way to find it because we have a lot of articles there. And on the right-hand side is a place to get that video series. Like I said, completely free. It's not, you know, it's not a, it's not a thing we're trying to make money off of. It's really more educational. 
Okay, great. I'll make sure that that goes in the show notes so people can find it. That's awesome. Is there um, anything else that you'd like to talk about that you'd like to mention to people about retirement or about your business? Anything that uh, they should know? I, I just think that, you know, um, as people are thinking of, or, or preparing for retirement, um, you know, a lot of times it gets becomes overwhelming. And I it, it makes sense when you think about it for 30 maybe even longer years, people do, they save money. And this transition from saving to now I'm going to take this money that I saved and I'm going to start pulling from it is extremely overwhelming. But it's what you did it for. And remember that you, you save this money for decades so that you can retire. But people feel so guilty about pulling it out. We just had a phone call today with a client who's done a fantastic job of saving. Uh, she, she retired about a year ago and she had some money in savings and she goes, oh my goodness, now I feel like a retiree because I'm going to start pulling money from my savings because like my actual retirement accounts. And it, she was way overwhelmed. We were just, we had, we just had to talk her through it and go, look, you did all of this so that you could get here. It's okay. But it is overwhelming. And just understand, you you worked hard and saved all that money and, and came up with all of these things that you did. You were disciplined for decades so that you could retire. Don't feel guilty about it. And I will tell you, guilt is huge when it comes to retirement. People feel guilty. They're like, oh, my goodness, I feel like I'm a reckless person because I'm pulling money out of these retirement accounts. It's what you did it for. It's not a problem. It's okay. That's really good advice that, and that I can see myself doing that. I have been saving and saving and it's going to be hard to pull it out. Yeah. To, to watch it go down instead of going up. It's, it's going to, there's going to be a lot of panic there. Yeah. And it's, it's very common, but just remember it's why you did it. It's, yeah. it's the whole purpose of why you did it. You didn't, you very few people worked hard to save money to leave it all behind. You, you, you worked hard to save money so that you could retire and live on it. And it is a hard concept to transition into, but it is what we did it for. And you don't have to leave it all to your kids. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's going to be a hard thing to remember too. That, you know, yeah. You know, they can have their own life. They can save for their retirement. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Well, thanks very much for joining me today, Raiden. I really enjoyed it. And I think that the type of things that you're teaching people or that you're helping people with are so important. Just their, their lifestyle things, not just finance things and, you know, helping them pave the way for their, uh, for their retirement. Well, good. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And that's it for this episode of Beyond Retirement. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Are you ready to start rocking your retirement? head on over to www.beyondretirement.ca forward slash rocking it and sign up to plan out your own roadmap for retirement. Don't wait till it's too late.